Hello, Lori. <laughs> I'm just on time. <laughs> Almost late. Um, how are you? Uh, I'm good, thank you. So, <laughs> we have um, our third paper of the session um, is uh, TED Suits as a source of training data for static analysis classifiers by Lori Flynn, and, uh, who, uh, who is here. So go ahead, Lori. Okay, thank you. So um, I'll talk with you about test suites as a source of training data for static analysis classifiers. Um, this is work by myself and Will Snavely and Zachary Kurtz. We developed a novel method that uses test suites to automatically generate labeled data for static analysis classifiers, implemented the method in a software system, and then in a case study, we generated a large quantity of labeled data for many CWE, or common weakness enumeration, the MITRE taxonomy of code flaws. Um, we use the Juliet C, C++ version one test suite for that, and then created four types of classifiers and tested them on holdout data. We also tested something called, that we call speculative mapping that I'll talk to later, and devised an effort efficient part automated method to map um, static analysis tools to test suite taxonomies. As a standard part of software testing today, um, code bases are analyzed by one or more static analysis tools. Each of those outputs a set of alerts or warnings. <clears throat> today, in most organizations, those must be manually examined. The static analysis results are not proofs. They're, um, you know, due to Rice's theorem, they must be. Um, uh, they must be examined manually and adjudicated as true or false positives. That leads to the scenario shown on the top right, uh, which actually uses data from uh, over 10 years of CERT audited secure coding, um, this uh, secure coding team, my, my research group, are um, uh, adjudication on uh, uh, code bases. Um, uh, on static analysis uh, for various code bases. You can see that the blue bars show adjudicated true and false positives, but they're much smaller than the large red bar uh, of indeterminate, not yet adjudicated meta alerts. <clears throat> and that's a typical result. Most organizations just don't have the money, which translates into effort to adjudicate all those results. By the way, in our work, um, we use the concept of meta alerts to more efficiently do both manual and automated um, um, adjudication or manual adjudication and automated classification. So alerts that share the same line, file path, and code flaw condition, such as CWE190 or in 31 c they map to the same meta alert. <laughs> um, and meta alerts are uh, manually adjudicated or classified. So the goal of our work involves classification algorithm development using automatically labeled and manually adjudicated data um, that precisely and with high recall classifies meta alerts as expected true positive and expected false positive with the rest as indeterminate. So that's our goal, um, which leads to this goal scenario shown on the bottom right, where um, the green bars now are the high confidence expected true and false positives. And um, if we want to um, uh, handle the same amount of meta alerts as before, we reduce the amount of effort, um, uh, manual effort, meaning reducing cost. Um, and likewise, uh, um, you can envision that um, one could handle more uh, meta alerts uh, with the same amount of effort using the classifier results. So highlights of related work include a Deletra 
at all. They tested static analysis, tool flow, code coverage, and it our, um, and found that uh, per tool average about 20% coverage of the um, types of code flaws that we're looking for. And using multiple tools helps but compounds the too many alerts problem. There are many um, studies that uh, um, have similar results. Hugh et al's large empirical study found a mean time of 117 seconds per static analysis adjudication. Data rich Google and Rothrop at all's ICSI paper developed classifier methods with an excellent 85% accuracy at predicting false positives. Cross project classifier prediction is an area of research <clears throat> developed to address insufficient labeled data within a code project, and our work involves a type of cross project prediction, but our focus of this work is on quickly and cheaply generating new labeled data. Heckman and Williams' extensive survey of methods that classify and prioritize actionable alerts um, covered a lot of many classification algorithms, active learning features, et cetera, but no work in their survey or anywhere else we've been able to find um, uh, uses test suites how we, uh, how we do. And uh, also NIST provides over 600,000 cost-free open source test suite programs in its software reference or SARD uh, data set. Um, and many non-NIST test suites for static analysis tools exist as well. So um, uh, in our Early work, we did machine learning with static analysis adjudication archives, combining use of multiple static analysis tools, many features, and competing classification techniques, um, uh, where we uh, took a holdout data set uh, uh, um, uh, from the labeled data and um, uh, uh, with um, and developed classifiers from the rest and then applied uh, the classifier um, to the holdout data and analyzed precision and recall. However, we found using um, that uh, our 10 years of CERT audited archives, we found typical issues for um, uh, any such static analysis data set. Um, uh, and typical issues just for classifiers in general. Um, uh, we, uh, we had a lack of data for many types of code flaws. Um, there were, uh, we focused on cert coding rules in the adjudications over those 10 years. Um, and yet uh, um, there were, uh, there was only a small set of cert coding rules that we had labeled data for, and even um, for those adjudic uh, uh, for that labeled data, uh, much of it was only uh, or mostly true positives, or only or mostly true uh, or false false positives and true positives, um, only one way. Um, so this motivated the idea to use test suites to generate labeled data. Um, since uh, um, by automating adjudicating meta alerts using the, um, the metadata from these test suites. So the idea is to use um, uh, these test suites in a way different than they were designed. They were designed to test both coverage of code flaws and the precision of tools at, at finding and identifying uh, flaws without false positives. Um, but we're using them instead to make labeled data. Um, so we use um, <clears throat> the test suites metadata <clears throat> in conjunction with CWE uh, to automatically generate many adjudicated meta alerts. And we also used um, CWE mappings to CERT rules, another taxonomy of code flaws, 
to generate uh, labeled data for CERT rules for test suites that did not uh, come with uh, metadata for CERT rules. Um, we also did uh, code metrics and we ran code metrics tools on, uh, um, on the code bases to get feature data and we ran static analysis tools on the code. So uh, our data preparation is shown on the left side here. You know, as inputs, we had defect metadata, the set of alerts from tools, mappings between checkers, which are you know the tool's internal taxonomy of flaws, um, and an external taxonomy of flaws. In this case, we use two external taxonomies, CWEs and CERT coding rules. Um, source code metrics and some file and function metadata. We generated with scripts we developed, Python scripts. Um, uh, so we put all that in a database. We uh, um, used our scripts to generate ground truth uh, labels. And then again, split the data into a training and a test set, uh, created classifiers, applied them, and then uh, measured uh, precision and accuracy, or precision and recall. Uh, for true positives, uh, so then we ran this case study um, using the system we had developed. Um, and the data we generated with uh, eight static analysis tools. Um, run on this code base. We generated true positives using the uh, this manifest file provided by NISTART. It's, there's this nice XML format that identifies a line, file path, and um, a, a particular CWE that definitely exists there. Um, and we identified false positives using metadata in the function name. Juliet um, uh, uses the particular string good to identify if there's no flaw present. For the one CWE, um, any other type of flaw could definitely be there, but just that one CWE is guaranteed not to be there. Our initial CWE results are shown here. Um, you can see that we generated a lot of new data for creating classifiers, about 37,000 true positives and about 84,000 false positives. This is a big savings in time. Um, a manual adjudication of any like randomly selected 121,000 or so meta alerts from nat natural programs, non-test suite programs, would take about 3,900 hours using that 117 seconds per adjudication from the huge Google study. Um, however, it's unlikely that such randomly selected meta alerts would cover many of the conditions or flaws covered by the Juliet test suite. It's specially created um, to, to um, cover not only many CWEs, but many subtypes of a particular CWE. Also, we needed true and false labels for for class uh, for classifiers. You know that have good precision. That is a problem in most you know manual adjudication data sets. Um, uh, is it, um, so realistically, a much larger manual auditing time would be required to develop equivalent data. Also, using the infrastructure we've developed with the system. Um, uh, it's relatively low effort to add another static analysis tool um, uh, and other test suites can be added. We've, um, you know, since then we've added uh, more test suites to our system um, because we already have this, this infrastructure for um, uh, using the uh, manifest, SARD manifest uh, uh, format. <laughs> So uh, the uh, classifier results without speculative mappings are shown here. Um, uh, you can see that the results look, um, you know, accuracy, precision, recall. Um, uh, for each of the four classifiers tested, the random forest lasso, 
um, uh, SG Boost and Light GBM, they're all pretty high. No, um, this is uh, this is only holdout uh, uh, tested on a holdout from the test suite itself. So it's um, uh, these are only initial results, but um, uh, the initial results uh, were of interest and high. Um, Per CWE and per CERT rule results are included in the paper for light GBM. For the other uh, classifiers, we had similar results. We also did speculative mapping. So speculative mapping um, it is something that we used for uh, tools, static analysis tools that don't come with um, or and don't have that don't have publicly available. Um, mappings between their internal taxonomy of flaws and CWEs or, you know, an external taxonomy of flaws that we want to use um, <clears throat> and that the test suite uh, pr uh, provides mappings to. So um, what we did was we assumed uh, for this type of mapping, we uh, used mappings between um, alerts the tool produced um, and any uh, um, anything in uh, you know if in that code location there was an entry in the manifest, we assume that there was a mapping with um, uh, five different um, uh, thresholds of mapping requiring you know twenty percent of the possible mappings uh, matched or forty etc up to one hundred percent. So we uh, tested alternate mapping forward checker to CWE and backwards CWE to checker, checker uh, mapping thresholds. Um, and the results are shown here. The actual relationships um, uh, between checker and um, taxonomy item could be any of, you know, a set of, any uh, uh, relationship that you could see in a Venn diagram, super set of, subset of, partial overlap equals or completely different. Um, uh, and that affects, uh, and that's the reason why, um, you know, it's not always 100% match. We had unexpected results. We had expected um, uh, the mappings to be slightly better with high threshold matches. Um, uh, or we had expected that the, um, the resulting classifiers to be slightly better using high threshold matches, and we had expected it to be worse for low threshold matches. So this is our initial data with speculative mappings. Now, we think, you know, based on these initial results, that speculative mappings could be used as a possible source of improvement for classifiers with severely underrepresented conditions. Uh, for instance, that it's most inclusive, there are 100 to CWE in the training data using speculative mappings versus only 82 in non-speculative training data. We also developed an effort saving method for mixing automation with manual mapping. Um, surprisingly, a lot of static analysis tools do not provide mappings to external taxonomies, though those um, uh, external taxonomy mappings are needed uh, to develop uh, multi-tool classifiers um, and uh, organizations often want to uh, be sure that they um, treat certain types of CWEs uh, or miserables, et cetera. So you really want to have external mappings. So anyways, um, uh, by first doing speculative mapping, automated speculative mapping, you can generate possible matches with a test suite and then manually evaluate the possible match. So there are approximately 700 CWE. Static analysis tools may have hundreds of checker IDs. It's far too much effort to validate about 70,000 potential mappings manually. But with a, you know, um, uh, if you use a guess of three speculative mappings per checker, which is actually much higher than we found in practice, you still save a factor of about 233 less effort to do the mapping. So we think this is a pretty useful uh, method. 
we analyze feature importance. Um, just uh, one is shown here, a function called by local had the highest information gain. Um, uh, that's um, uh, where alerts for a function were called, uh, uh, for a function called by a local function were far more likely to be false positive. Um, we publish the open source data used to develop classifiers and make mappings in this work in the RC data data set linked here. Um, we're not able to include the alerts and checker mappings um, from proprietary tools due to their license restrictions. Um, and we also included the, our Julia Java test suite data developed after uh, uh, the paper um, uh, that uses the same system um, uh, discussed in this paper and presentation. And there's some more information in the, the linked blog. Um, so to summarize, we developed this novel method using test suites to automatically generate labeled data, implemented the method, uh, and then did a case study on it. Um, we also tested speculative mapping and devised this effort efficient part automated method uh, for, for mapping using test suite taxonomy. So uh, our next steps, which we have begun, involve using, uh, working with test suites involving naturally developed and larger code bases, including uh, um, like Wireshark and, and Stone Soup. We've extended testings, testing to use the classifiers on natural code. Uh, and that is something we're starting to do. Um, and we're attempting to improve uh, classification by using active learning strategically, combining the manually adjudicated meta alerts on natural code with test suite auto labeled meta alerts. So that's the big focus of our work um, uh, that we've started and going forward. Comments and questions are welcome. <clears throat> So uh, thank you so much, Lori. Uh, very interesting work. Um, so uh, it's it's different in that you know you're not trying to uh, you're not talking about tests and improving testing, but on using tests, which is another motivation for having uh, good test suits <laughs> available, right? So um, I think it's a, a very uh, very nice, very smart way of improving um, the, um, the static analysis uh, classifiers. Um, and you know the, your, your first uh, experiments look very good. Um, so you reach like 90 right percent uh, accuracy, uh, which is um, I, I, I saw in your uh, related work slide that um, you reference uh, Ruth Roof. And you say that they reached um, eighty-five percent accuracy, right? So, and so you you got better than them, right? <laughs> yeah, What's although the they they worked with um, with uh, natural programs, so our our, our okay. results are really kind of artificially high because we're using test suites, and test suites are not, um, you know, they're. Uh, um, uh, these test suites were developed um, specifically to test uh, uh, for particular code flaws. So they're not at represented uh, as representative of, of natural programs. So I think the okay. rough, rough um, uh, <laughs> result is really, it's the, ide the ideal, ideal. Uh, right. um, that we're working towards with natural right. programs. But you know uh, your your numbers are very promising, and um, so uh, I, I so you said that you were going to use uh, other code bases, right? And so how uh, what do you see as the main challenges in your future work? Yeah, um, so so um, mixing. Uh, uh, manual adjudication uh, um, data, uh, you know, manually labeled data with the test suite data 
um, in an active learning system is a, a really fascinating problem to me. And I think um, it's the important uh, next problem to work on because um, uh, it's not useful to predict it's not useful to others to just predict, um, you know, what's wrong in a test suite. Others are, they're interested in predicting um, uh, if static analysis uh, results are true or false um, on, on real code bases. Um, so uh, um, there is a huge amount of, um, of data that can be generated with test suites. Um, but doing active learning on really large code bases or data sets, um, you know, has uh, latency issues. You can't uh, uh, use all your data and, you know, process it all each time you get a new adjudication. Um, but uh, as you start to develop labeled data in a natural uh, code base, you know, in a particular real program, you know, you start with very little labeled data. Often organizations are not even storing their labeled data. They're just, uh, um, they start out by um, just having developers look at the static analysis results, fix things that they need to, and then toss the results. Um, so, so first of all, organizations need to, to store the results and, and then, uh, um, as you build up more of the, you know, really valuable natural labeled data, the question is uh, how much of the, um, the test suite data do you use and which test suite data do you use and how do you kind of ramp down from the test suite data? Test suite data right. often has, you know, it has that coverage of many, many types of code flaws, which helps your system to learn about, you know, how particular tools how well particular tools handle um, certain types of code flaws. And, and so, um, you know, you may want to keep that data uh, uh, if you don't have any naturally labeled data uh, for that type of, of, of code flaw. Right, right. So right. that's a big research <laughs> question that we're working right, on. Right, right, right. Yeah, and I think, you know, uh, with enough labels, you know, this could be applied to other tools like uh you know tools for um bad smell detection you know if you just have the labels <laughs> right so um you could you know it has a lot of application um so um there's there was something that um i didn't quite get uh so i think you you said in the paper that you use uh some code metrics right like lines of code but i i didn't get how do you use them in this uh, yes um so um uh, 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 for developing the um for developing the uh the classifiers um uh, we feed in many different features, uh, um, and okay. the, uh, for each um, for each meta alert, you can kind of um, you know there's kind of all the data from the static analysis tool, and um, you know the line of code and the function name, but for each line of code, each function name, and each file name associated with a meta alert. We also associate the code metrics for that function and for that file. Um, so, so that's how we're able to use those additional features uh, for that meta alert. I see, I see. Right, right, right. So, and, and yeah. you, uh, it looked necessary to add that. You needed those features to, to make it, it better. It helps. It and helped. this was not, uh, you know, yeah. we used um, CCSM and Lizard of the open source tools. Um, and um, we also used a, a proprietary tool that we're not allowed to name. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> just because of the tools licenses, there are a lot of, um, there are very restrictive <laughs> licenses. Right. Um, so, so my hope is, um, and because of that, I think because of, um, 
restrictive licenses that have um, interfered with uh, people uh, uh, sharing a lot of label, sharing labeled data. Um, um, uh, 